So my name's Craig Campbell and I'm based in sunny Glasgow, which you can see behind me. I've been in digital marketing for close to 20 years. I've been everything from a guy who had no idea what he was doing, working in my bedroom, um, to go on to build up my own successful digital marketing agency. Started out as a freelancer working in the house, done that for three or four years, basically blagging a living, had no fucking clue what I was doing. Started off thinking I was going to be a really good web designer, which I was garbage at, but learned about HTML and uh, found out I was really bad at it. Uh, <laughs> looked at it myself and was just like, this is garbage. So went on to, to explore, you know, how websites worked and the internet and everything else. And before I knew it, I was doing SEO self-taught on forums and all that kind of stuff so i've done that for three or four years in the house uh, making money doing it for small businesses and all that stuff um and became quite lazy uh and, and non-productive after working in the house for four years and got to the point where i just wasn't doing any work um, i was literally taking the missus to work coming home and uh, i would watch like jeremy kyle and then i'd be like right i've got this to do um, and then I would have my breakfast and then I felt tired. I would sleep, wake up at two or three in the afternoon. I had to pick the missus up at five and I wasn't really getting any work done then. I was working late at night and all that stuff. So decided to get an office. So when I dropped the wife off at work, I would then go to this office, which I'm going to take you to now. This is where the place was. There's obviously industrial units and stuff here, but uh, I'll show you the actual first office. Actually, there um, was my first office, right in there, very small office. We eventually hired that one as well um, for a sales guy because I couldn't listen to him yapping all the time. Um, but within this office place, you can expand. Um, so if you needed a bigger office, um, which I'll show you when I went to after this, um, you can. You just basically phone them and say, I need a bigger place. My next big office was in there which was massive it was literally the size of that whole wall and very very deep um, so that was the last place i had in here and uh, what happened at the end this was called evans easy space they went bust and we basically get told that your office was gone and uh, we very quickly had to move to paisley which i'm going to show you so Literally, <laughs> we stole the chairs out of the old office and everything which belonged to this place. So when you come here for an office, you get your internet, your chairs, your tables, everything um, is all within the price. But as we're going, we basically got a white man, a white van man coming up to this shutter door, <laughs> took the desks, <laughs> the chairs, the whole lot, piled up the van and went to a place in Paisley, which we stayed in for a few years. But this is where it all started for me. And this was probably my first ever proper office. So when we left Hillington, had to come here. It was a five year lease um, and we were in the middle floor, which is where you can see Gordon Blythe just now. Um, DM Hall were there as well and thoroughly enjoyed it here. Had our own wee car parking space. It's five minutes for the house and it was a nice wee building to actually bring people to as well. So that wee bit up there, which you'll be able to see in a minute, was uh, where I actually sat. There's a wee room there that I used to get away from all the staff. So in Paisley, stayed here for three years. Probably see that's where my business really started to take off. Um, started hiring more staff and started scaling everything up. But again, entering this industry as someone who really didn't know what they were doing. Um, I, you know, I had no business training, no nothing like that. I, I made a lot of mistakes and started getting more staff and doing all of this kind of stuff and it wasn't just to make money I think it was more of an ego thing um you know go down to my mates and say no oh, I've got 10 staff or whatever um, and that particular business was it ended up a failure um, but I, I lasted um, three years in Paisley and whilst I loved the place and, and and all that kind of stuff it was time to move on so when I left Paisley there um looked at other offices and in Glasgow city centre, it would probably cost me around 20, 25 grand for the same kind of space. And we didn't want to pay that, it's just an overhead we don't really need. And we decided to go to Hillington and we found the, the warehouse, which we'll see in a moment. 
um, which costs us seven grand a year, and we were able to convert it into a training room. We had an area for table tennis and gym stuff, and our office for the staff that we wanted to keep, and uh, just much more cost efficient. But the transport links to Hillington, free parking, and all that made a difference. Again, we could have paid, you know, three times more in Glasgow, but then you've got customers coming to you, Canny Park, cost them to park, and all that other drama. So that was why we wanted to go back to Hillington. Plus, Hillington's right next to Cardonald, which is selfish of me. <laughs> But I wanted to be close, close as close to home as possible, and uh, I. So that's where we've been ever since in this warehouse. But whilst I was moving over back to Hillington, um, I decided. So I'd hired salespeople and I had all that kind of stuff going on, and uh, it didn't quite work out quite well. I just felt that the salespeople weren't motivated. You know, they were on a salary and all that kind of stuff, uh, and, and and I tried the model of. I found a sales guy, which is my current business partner, and uh, got on well with him. And he'd left his old job, and he was outsourcing work to me for a year. Um, and as I say, decided to say, right, do you know what? Just let's fucking go 50-50 on an agency. Let's just build something from scratch. Um, we got the office in Hillington. I took the staff that I wanted to keep from my old agency to Hillington. And we are there until this day. On the side, I regularly buy and sell websites, speak at conferences, uh, do a lot of consultancy, a lot of training for other people. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So the speaking thing is massive in terms of building a brand because you're speaking in front of thousands of people, the, the footage of that goes out there, the photographs go out there, and that was massive for building a brand. And I also want to give a little shout out to Sam Rush. Um, they massively helped me in terms of webinar exposure and stuff like that as well. And same Rush were also allowing me the opportunity to speak at certain events as well. A big part of my job is sitting in my backside all day, doing stuff, emails back and forth, running a business and all that kind of stuff. And obviously that does mean that I'm not actually physically getting any work done on the body. And obviously you can get out of shape. And especially when COVID came, I uh, literally sat in the house like everyone else for uh, close to a year and stood in the scales and went, shit, um, I had put on nearly four stone in a year over COVID, just drinking beers and eating shit. In recent times, which I think is massively important, I've started to go back to doing a bit of training, boxing training, uh, because I don't particularly want to run in a treadmill, and thoroughly enjoying that, and actually feeling a lot better about myself, although I've still got a long way to go. Um, I think that's massively important. You know, don't work too hard. You've got to try and get the work-life balance going, and I think the exercise, has improved my motivation. Just waking up early in the morning and stuff like that just makes me feel a lot better. So I've been doing that recently as well, um, which is, is having a positive impact um, and should hopefully have more of a positive impact in my body as time goes on, but thoroughly enjoying the training again. So coming up to Cameron House Marina, I've got a boat obviously just for a pastime, a hobby or something new to do uh, at the weekends with the family. But also, um, I like coming up here to just get away from everyone. So obviously working at home, I've got my two-year-old son, Charlie, banging on the door, Daddy, come out, come out, and all that stuff. And, and, and obviously if you are in the zone, ready to work, it can be a pain in the backside working with people. I can just put my headphones on and do the stuff that I've got to do, whether it's recording YouTube videos or uh, just getting into emails or, or doing whatever I'm doing or actually working on someone's website. Sometimes, uh, for me personally, I get easily distracted. So if I'm sitting in the office and there's six or seven days in the office, I'll end up talking a lot of shite, basically. So I can come up here for like three hours and smash out a day's work. Over the years, I've built up a good personal brand and obviously that in my industry comes from being in social media and you know, being in Twitter, Instagram, TikTok even, uh, YouTube and everything else is driving traffic and building my personal brand. Obviously, I try and give away tips and advice and try and make it as educational as I possibly can. But I think, you know, the likes of TikTok or even doing videos like this do show people like, a different side to me, dig a bit deeper into what I do um, and also show a bit of personality and a bit of fun, which I think is massively important because I believe that People buy into people, and if you can't be yourself or you're trying to you know, impress the corporate world, then you probably would never go on camera because someone's going to pull you up for saying something. So I think uh, you know TikTok especially is one that I've never been able to monetize, but I find it fun 
and enjoyable and I think it's still part of uh, building a brand and showing people who you are and showing that you can do different things even if it's bad dancing so I think anyone any business out there there's no such thing as bad exposure so you've got to take advantage of all of these platforms and grab as much of that traffic as you possibly can and obviously try and get eyeballs on you or your business or whatever it is you do. What I would like to start off by saying though is 95% of people are amazing, they give you good feedback, oh that's been a useful tip or, or whatever, but there has been a small amount of people um, who have trolled the absolute shit out of me, uh, gave me abuse and all that kind of stuff, which is fine. I've had the, a, a couple of, you know, situations where that, that wasn't so, you know, it was a lot worse than name calling or whatever, but I think, uh, no matter what you do, putting yourself on social media, you are going to attract people. You've seen it yourself on TikTok and everything else. People will come for you no matter what you put up um, or they'll say, you know, that's a shit watch or that's a shit t-shirt or that's shit shoes. Or There's always going to be someone uh, sticking their nose in. And I think for me, that, uh, you know, shows those people up uh, for what they are, just sad, pathetic people. And I think you cannot let that put you off a putting your business out there because if a big part of any business is online someone's going to have to put their face to that and I think no matter who you are in life you're going to get trolls I think you know David Beckham, Brad Pitt, whoever they're all getting trolls and uh, even uh, it doesn't matter who you are you've got to get somebody saying something about you and I think you become immune to it but it's obviously hard to take at the start um, but I have had a few weird instances where um, I've had some funny stuff people like I said before um, a company were using my image as a kind of ad a Facebook ad and someone and I was standing like that on it and they be, someone basically commented under there um, you know that's the most untrustworthy thumbs I've ever seen I'm not too sure what's wrong with them <laughs> something quite a lot of people are asking me recently and uh, to give you the story of how that worked uh, and stuff I wanted an IMDB credit for SEO reasons which many people will understand and uh, I seen this local guy doing Crime Lords and there was an IMDB credit available and a phone part or whatever it's a hundred quid or whatever it was and I'm like fuck I want that IMDB credit I didn't particularly want the phone part um, but anyway got speaking to David from Crime Lord and uh, he's like trying to jump on a zoom and all that stuff and he was talking to me just to find out a bit more about me and uh, at that point he's like hmm, maybe you know be your public speaking because I think he dug about about me and <laughs> and seeing that I was able to talk in camera so he's like rather than the wee phone part do I come in and we'll do a few lines or whatever and I'm like that's fine so done a few lines and hopefully I'm thinking that it went okay I wasn't you know shy or anything like that done done what I was asked to do maybe a bit nervous in the first case but um, he then came back to me and said like do you want to come back for another wee bit? David wanted a business owner who was getting trolled online, which I actually do. Um, and he, you know, I was acting as myself really. And um, and so the, these two are gangsters and I say to them, go to bump this troll off. And they, somehow I turned back up at their office and the troll's there. And uh, I'll not tell you the whole story, but I end up killing the guy. And uh, that went well, I hope. Uh, and then I was talking to David after it and, um, I was just telling him that I had a boat and uh, and he's like, boat? Uh, and he came back to me and said, like, we, we, I've, I've been thinking, you know, we could go out there and dig a body up in one of the, uh, dig a hole for the body up in one of the islands. Uh, so I've managed to scrape up two episodes, um, which I've got reasonable parts in, which is my first ever um, acting experience, which has been a lot of fun. Um, and I never set out to do it. I just wanted that IMDB link, but I've, I've, enjoyed the the people are good uh have a good laugh when we're out filming stuff just fucking around um and it's really good to just see something different in terms of how it all works and stuff so i've enjoyed it don't know if i'll be in any more at this point but hopefully david said that i will get asked back for other bits i can't obviously be in every episode but if you are interested in it you should check it out crime lord series i think it comes out on amazon prime um but you will be able to get a sneak preview 
through a YouTube link if you're interested. So if you're watching this and you're interested in seeing me bumping off a troll, um, check it out.